The newest member of the Court TV family, Ashley Banfield, joins us or rejoins Hello. us on the show. Um, Ashley, I want to talk to you about what's happening in, in, in Harris County, Texas, which is where Houston is. It's one of the most populated counties in the country. And it's sort of run, I guess, in their system by a judge. Lena Hidalgo is, is one of the people that's in charge. And she now has ordered the residents of Harris County, if you go outside, you must wear a mask. If you don't wear a mask, you apparently um, face a $1,000 fine. This is, this is unreal. What, what more do we know about what this judge has ordered here? Yeah, that's the uh, third largest county in the United States of America that's just been put under this kind of an order. Not the only place where this has happened. Good old New York, which is just down the road from me, has a mask order for everybody over the age of two. Um, and there are about eight states right now, Vinny, that have mask orders, which means you don't go out in public without covering uh, your cake hole. And I learned that Texas uh, term when I was down in Texas living in Dallas. But let me tell you what exactly the rules are um, in Harris County and Houston in particular. There it is. Everybody over the age of 10 has to wear a mask over the face and mouth. And you have to wear it in public or when you are with people who do not live with you. There are some exceptions for those with health and mental health issues. And also if you're driving or if you are eating or if you are exercising alone. So um, still, that's a lot of people who now have to wear masks. And Vinny, they say, look, it's not the surgical masks. So don't freak out if you don't have one of those fancy blue ones at home. Um, the officials in Harris County have said you can make a mask out of anything, an old t-shirt that you have at home, a bandana, any kind of scarf. Is that the perfect scenario for safety? No, but it is certainly better than nothing. Yeah, I see a couple of problems here, though. Number one, first, when this all first started, um, they were, everyone, when I say they, the government, right, was telling us yeah. the masks don't help, don't wear them, right? So we heard that initially. So now that's been a, a 180 on that. But then enforcing this, and, and I'm not the only one who has a problem with it, the police union in Houston as well. I want to read something from a police union uh, response here on Twitter. And, and what they're saying is, Everyone should be wearing a mask in public, right? I wear one every day, but making not wearing one punishable by law and asking officers to enforce it will do irreparable damage to our relationship with the community. We're already stretched too thin without having to enforce this. The other part of the enforcement, Ashley, that I have a problem with here, now you're asking police officers to now approach what may be lots of people mm -hmm. who aren't wearing masks. It's tough enough to be a cop. You don't want to have, you want to have as little interaction yeah. at this point with the public as possible. But now, I mean, to me, it, it's almost more dangerous for the police now. Yeah. And you're asking police to approach reckless people, right? People who aren't wearing masks don't care. And they might have more of a propensity to actually have um, exposed themselves to, to the virus. And so, no, you're right. But in their defense, the folks in Harris County have said, that they're going to distribute 70,000, I think, of these masks in the coming days and weeks uh, to the vulnerable populations to try to get, um, you know, everybody a mask who needs one. But 70,000 would drop in a bucket in the most populated county, um, third largest county in the U.S. It'll be interesting to see how that play, uh, plays out. But meanwhile, closer to you in Connecticut, mm -hmm. I guess in My Westport, babe. they were considering, they were considering getting drones to kind of go on patrol. Let's, let's take a listen to, uh, what is it, Dragonfly Inc. is the company that makes these things, describing what this drone can do. Dragonfly's public health and safety system uses standard 4K cameras to provide anonymized data on social distancing, heart rate, respiratory rate, and fever detection, all in the service of providing population health data to our public safety officials. The system does not collect individualized data. The system does not identify people. The system takes population samples and provides this anonymized data to our public safety officials. Oh, <laughs> that, that looked a little My creepy. Video I mean, I, it, <laughs> that's that's unreal that it can do that. Now, are are they going to do this? Actually, fly these things over Connecticut so we can take Ashley's temperature whenever we want. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'm going to be honest with you. Up until just a couple of hours ago, yeah, that was the plan for Westport. Westport's just down the road from me as well. And, you know, the makers have that promotional video and Dragonfly promises that it can do this. It can, you know, from 190 feet away, actually, they say that they can get a temperature reading. They can tell if you're coughing, sneezing. They can tell um, what your heart rate, your respiratory issues are. But the most important part of that was that, you know, the Westport police weren't thinking of collecting all that data, they weren't even going to, it was literally going to figure out if stickman A and stickman B were social distancing six um, you know, feet apart and then, you know, blurt out warnings to you, get out of here and go home and social distance, et cetera. But they've scrapped the plan. They, I think they got a lot of blowback from, from residents. And um, so that's not going to happen, at least in Westport, it's not going to happen. But have you heard about Jersey? Can I tell you something about Jersey, Vinny? Yeah, sure. My old stomping grounds. Yeah, I thought I'd get you with that one. This one's just for you. Um, there was some video that came across all of our servers today, which we just couldn't resist. And it was of these drones, bossy bots, some people call them. Take a look at your, your screen there. Uh, the drone's flying over actually a police station in, in Jersey. But what's fascinating about this in Elizabeth, New Jersey, is that they have not scrapped the plan yet. They are planning to use this to go out um, uh, you know, across the population. Don't worry if you're in Jersey right now, it's not gonna go and peek into your yards and in your personal space. This is only for public areas. Um, but there's a pre-recorded message from the mayor of Elizabeth, New Jersey. And I'm just gonna have to paraphrase because I don't know exactly, but it's something along the lines of stop gathering, uh, disperse, uh, go home. And I'm not doing the Jersey accent um, appropriately. So I'm gonna have to, you know, turn that back to you, but, but it has a siren too. And it's going to be sort of reminiscent of that stuff that we saw in Wuhan, China back at the end of February. And so you want to try your hand at the stop gathering, disperse and go home, Vinny, with the Jersey accent. Hey, you get out of the streets, <laughs> get back in the house, huh? <laughs> what are you stupid? Maybe something like that would work. That could work. Oh, I'm calling the mayor's office tomorrow, and I am going to beg them <laughs> to call you for that recording to replace the mayor with Vinnie Politan. <laughs> right, I wanted to cover one more one more thing with you. Mm -hmm. And um, on CNN, <laughs> Anderson Cooper was interviewing the mayor of Las Vegas, and one of the issues that that came up was uh, sporting events, and you know, should things be open? Uh, let's take a look at the clip, and then we shall react. Casinos, so you want them open because obviously visitors are not going to come without casinos and shows and things. Well, no, they'll come because they love. We've got major league sports here, and we've so you got want so many open. I'd love everything open because okay. I think we've had uh, viruses for years so that, that have been here. That is the call you said you weren't making. That is the call. You want casinos open. You want stadiums open. You want restaurants open. You want Vegas back in business. And, and, and Anderson, I understand you're being yeah. very specific and I appreciate it because that's where you're seeing it. No, the reality is I want us open in the city of Las Vegas so our people right. can go back to work. And okay. that's it because we're putting right. children and families back out on the street and very much a part of it for our convention business are our hotels and yes, gambling and gambling is a part of it. Uh there's a lot to react to there, but let's try to focus on the uh, sports, right? The Oakland uh -huh. Raiders have their new stadium in Vegas, and that's coming up in the fall. They've got, uh, I think they've got a hockey uh, team as well, but um, sporting events, that, that's going to be difficult. And the baseball season now canceled, uh, or not canceled, it's not canceled, it's postponed. Not yet. It hasn't happened. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so these are problems, all these things that how do we get back online and how about all those ticket holders out there? Well, I'm going to tell you this. Um, already at least two people have decided as season ticket holders uh, for Major League Baseball events that they're suing. And they've decided to launch a suit not just against Major League Baseball, but also against their partners in ticketing. Um, you know, like uh, uh, StubHub and those kinds of partners. They say this is not fair. Uh, we do not get to go to these big parks and see our ball games. They're expensive tickets. And, you know, you've already said that we're at least a month or so away from a possible opening. But if that doesn't happen, we want our money back. And, you know, this is a tough one, right? Because Major League Baseball still has big bills to pay. They're still operating. Um, they have those massive salaries, Vinny, to pay as well. And so they've actually gotten together with the players. 
and they have made an agreement to prorate those big, big salaries. So if you know you only get half the season, there's going to be a prorated salary that goes to those ball players. But nobody's suggesting yet prorating the, the the tickets. You know, especially for those season ticket holders, those are really expensive, and those are really big fans. Not to you know tee off. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, you know the person who bought those season tickets maybe they lost their job and and maybe you know that that ten thousand dollars would be very handy right about now so we'll keep mm -hmm. an eye on that as well. Ashley, awesome! Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Vinny. And don't forget, next time you're in Jersey, look up because I'm going to push for your voice to be in those drones. <laughs> that would be good. That'd be good. Would, would they listen trick. though? Is the question. Oh, are you kidding yeah. me? Thanks, you scared Ashley. me. Ha, ha, ha.